Right, today I'm going to show you how I make my fret bevel. I've got one side for flat, one side for 35 degrees. Went out to Harbor Freight, bought a 8 inch bastard file, flat file. You can also get this at Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot. This is from Menards. This was a dollar ninety nine. No, this was two ninety nine. This was a dollar ninety nine at Harbor Freight. Same manufacturer, same stamping, same cutouts. So all coming out of the same factory in China. What I did is I made this one. I wanted a little bit thicker. So this is three inches wide here. This is actually three and a half inches wide. This is sticking out just slightly too far. So I want to recess this a little bit more so it only sticks out a quarter inch, specifically on this side. So what it is, I grabbed some Douglas fir from a cutoff that I had, drew a center line, found my depth of the file that I want so that it's only sticking out a quarter inch, set that here. One of the reasons I'm using Douglas fir versus a hardwood is that if I slide this off or move really erratically, with this being a softwood versus a, a hardwood like maple, most likely this will get dented versus the maple. I don't want a hardwood bevel. I want a softwood bevel just in case it's going to dig in anywhere. It'll you know scratch this before it scratches the maple. This is made out of basswood and get some really good you know softness to it. Same thing here with Douglas fir. So I'm going to take this to the table saw cut this depth first, then we'll go back and cut the bevel. So the file is slightly larger than the kerf of the blade, so I'm going to move this over about a sixteenth of an inch and do one more pass. All right, next thing we do here is we take the fence, we flip it over on the other side. We set the blade to 35 degrees. We line up the depth, get my push block. I'm going to hold it here, push and cut. All right, so now we've got one side with a 35 degree bevel, one side that's flat file sits in the slot perfectly. The one good thing about Chinese metal is that it's very brittle. So instead of cutting sometimes, you can just knock it off. All right, the last step here with setting the file is gluing it in. So I've got some five minute epoxy. I'm gonna mix it up. I've got my file. I've got a little bit of a spacer right here to hold up this end of the file because this end tapers so I want to leave it at a uh, consistent depth. So I've got a little spacer in there, just a little wire tie that I'm going to space all this out with. Mix up the epoxy. You don't have to glue the file in, uh, but since they're a dollar and the blocks don't cost me anything, I'd rather just glue this in and have it permanently set than as I'm going back and forth having this get loose because the spacer came out or whatever that hold, held it tight. Got the green tape on here so I can actually just rub this in. I'm going to take my tape off. This way when I tape, I keep my edge clean. I don't have any epoxy left over. Grab my file. And just slowly push it in. Make sure my spacer is set up right here. So there you go. I'll let this sit overnight. Obviously it's only five minute epoxy, but I'll let it sit. I'm going to clean this up with a chisel, same thing with that right there. 